didn't think that rain was ever going to give us a break this afternoon to get out here. It was a monsoon, probably a good four and a half, five inches before it quit. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Looks like we're going to need the chest waders for this adventure. About 20 minutes ago, our great big tom turkey Gilbert and all the guineas started sounding off. That's usually a pretty good indication that the big guys have come up close to the back end of the house here where the woods meets everything. See the little duck pin right there. We're going to head down around toward the pond. Might be a good time to maybe see some footprints if we can get a light on it down here. There's something moving across that mm -hmm. down by those trees. Do you see what I'm seeing? I do. Got the IR lights running on the camera tonight and we have also got a brand new Mega Beast UV light that William McLemore had sent to us here a while back. And Thank you William. Wanted to bring that out and show it to you and play with it a little bit and see if we saw anything interesting with that. You got the little one, the original one, kind of hold it up there so they can see what we're... That's IR. No, that's that's the flashlight. I'm talking about the UV lights. Wait a minute. I can get all my lights straight. Okay, there's you, baby. You're the keeper of the flame tonight, so... I guess so. <laughs> hmm. Hold your arm out there with that light. I just want to... Well, it's kind of hard to see, but that's the original UV light that we were using. Little UV beast miniature. And it does a fantastic job. Uh -huh. But now, show the other one out here. I mean, it makes it look like a toothpick in comparison. Right. It's... A beast. Very big. Looking for this switch. I hear the owl. Yeah. The 400 pound owl over there in the Already. corner. Already. Well, anyway, I didn't kill all those lights for now until we get down there. But. It's been a crazy, crazy month. All kinds of weird stuff happening. Electronics have been going nuts. Yes. TV's been going on and off by itself in the middle of the night. Last night, I know for a fact that I turned everything off before we went to bed and woke up around 4 o'clock in the morning, nature call. Walked in the living room and there the TV was. There it was. Somebody's having all kinds of fun. And sit there and watch something and the channels start changing in midstream. <laughs> it feels fun loving, but <laughs> it is also a little disturbing right in the middle of a great scene of <laughs> something. Well, this is a little pasture crossing in the big woods is directly in front of us over there. And the finger of it comes around and comes up to the back of the house over here. So they kind of make that loop and run that circle. See that regular flashlight for just a minute. There we go. Just a
when you're out here in the middle of all this, you kind of get used to the sounds that are normal and common. And it stands out really well when there's something different. Mm -hmm. And usually when you hear way off in the distance, you know, the neighbor's hound starts in on one of his long yips and yaps and rants. Something's got him all disturbed. And when ours start up, all of the birds, those guineas, are a great alarm system when anything comes up close. I'm seeing something, something flashing. kind of flashing mm -hmm. across that. Mm. It has been busy around here lately. We've been trying to get a bunch of stuff fixed up and squared away and birthing all kinds of new babies. The little mini pig had a nice little litter of mini bacon bits the other night. <laughs> I just heard that one. Yes. Come on, guys. Right now, the breeze is right in our face, so I'm <coughs> sure they can <coughs> see these IR lights shining like a beacon across this field. And we found, for those of you that have been with us, you know, we found that they're really adverse to the white light. I think it physically hurts their eyes. The IR light in the blue <coughs> does not seem to bother them. In fact, the blue tends to bring tends to bring them the up young closer. ones particularly up closer because they I've got a fascination that. with it. Mm -hmm. The blue color. We literally had to switch microphones because Took particularly was fascinated with the blue light that was at the tip of each of our mics on the last set that we had. Somebody's close here. I just got zinged. Who's here, please? Junior. Where you at, buddy? In front of you? Right up here. just in these trees <coughs> turn the regular light on so we can look at this little ditch crossing because that's a little sloppy a lot of times you'll see footprints running right through here. Oops. We've had a lot of uh, orb activity and let me get my bearings here. You took my light. <laughs> Just there keep walking go. forward. If we hear a big kersplunk, I'll reach in and pull you up. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Wouldn't be the first time I've kersplunked. Well, we're at the finger of the pond here. What was I just saying? Hmm. Oh, a lot of orb activity. But I've also noticed a lot of um, blasts, is what I would call it, of mm -hmm. light. And it's, it's not really like anything I can compare to.
to. And you see here at the base of the tree? Mm-hmm. That little glyph there. Well, that wasn't here the other day. Uh -uh. Brought the three-year-old down here to catch some fish. And this is actually right here where we were had the lawn chairs out. Huh. Kind of watching for footprints here. Who's whistling? It's off to my right. Well, come on. There he goes again. I think it's wanting to focus on the camera looking at it out across this pasture here. It's trying to find something to focus on like the trees over there in the grove. Get a little closer, maybe it'll help. Come on guys, you out here tonight. the eyeballs back there. All right, so here's a good spot to show you the difference between these two UV lights. Turn that great big one off for a minute, please. All right, so the little one that we've been using all the time, I'm gonna shine it on the base of this tree and show you the lichens that are on it. All right, now hit it with that big light. lights up the whole tree like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really pronounced. Hit that spot of course, this it. is a really wrong time to experiment with these after all this rain. I mean, it's just everything's washed over and stuff. The lichens are going to show up, obviously. But any of the oh, saliva or any places where they've relieved themselves things like that, that big UV light would show it, it would glow. Huh. Yeah, isn't that crazy? There's yellow and blue and green, just all kinds of colors on that. It's gorgeous. These show up just as like scarlet red. Oh, 
I'm going to turn the IR lights back on. We're almost to the tree line. You ready? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, there you go, keeper of the flames. You can have those flames back. One for <laughs> Turn our not to trip and break a leg light on. sloshy walk in here so bear with us we're kind of feeling our way under our feet I don't think we were anticipating all this rain this afternoon because it didn't look that bad on the weather thing Mama, she's a little slow making it through the mud there. Most of this pasture grass is about waist high to me. It's real easy when they crouch down, creeping across the field, just barely catch the There's line of their back. Hold the wire down for you. Um, might be a little tricky, but I can try it. If you hear a yeehaw, <laughs> you'll know what happened. <laughs> Good job, we did it. We did it. You see the eyes right through there? Mm -hmm. Which one is that? Here one. Hooing, hooing. Somebody's up here close. I'm trying to find. What did I just step in? Oh man. We're going to call it mud. Hey, uh, mud. <laughs> That's a load. Somebody's up here. Oh, 
there it is. That sensation of fog that we were talking about is right here. And what we realized, we went back through on some screenshots and Anku corrected me and said it wasn't fog, it was their orb essence. And I said, but it looked like fog, you know, leave it to me to argue with him. But he said, but did you notice moisture? And I said, no. And I had to really think about it for a minute, but the sensation of it truly was not what I knew to be fog. And I said, then what was it? And he said, the essence of the orb. And it was this picture of them just like passing through where we were standing on that. And I just stepped up here and it was the exact same sensation. It would give you the illusion of having fog around you. Well, that photo that I took with my phone last week, I could see, I think it was Junior, I'm pretty sure, by his shape and uh -huh. size and all of that passing through that tree line. Mm -hmm. And I put it on eight times zoom on the phone, took the picture. Mm -hmm. And then when I expanded it to look at it, you can see his head and shoulders, the cone head, the whole nine yards, but dead center of his body, you'll see the arms and then you see the legs underneath, but in the very center, it almost looks like a foggy orb, a misty, mm -hmm. translucent orb, and where the core of his you know, being, chest and right. abdomen would be. Nanku just calls it their essence. It's the orbs are not unusual. <laughs> of course they are to us. But you can make out the head, the shoulders, the swinging arms. You can see the lower parts of the legs, but right where you know from like the pelvis to lower chest midsection. area would be. It just looks like a misty orb covering that area of him. But he said it is how we travel. And often we'll see these as individuals, and each has their own color, if you will. But they also in group, which is what we experienced. In the one screenshot I have, they're just lined up like cordwood across that little creek from us. And the fog sensation was past us but they still maintain that across from us. It was just fascinating. Well, it's really crazy is when you see them like almost stacked like totem pole. Yeah. You know, and you see the yeah. faces one above the other, above the other, almost like they're making a pyramid or something. I still hear that 400 pound owl in the distance. I don't think the microphone's going to pick it up, but I can hear it. There. <laughs> that was a little one. Do you hear that high pitch? Uh -huh. Now the owl right behind it. And now it's got the dogs barking. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap this up for the night. A lot of the stuff that we were working on over the past month or so, we've finally gotten situated and squared away, so we're going to try our best not to be strangers, or any stranger than normal, <laughs> I was gonna which say, is I think pretty, that's pretty strange <laughs> most of the time, but you know what I mean. Yeah, we'll get right back with the daytime video. and I think we're going to leave it with them. I'm sure they're all a bunch of soggy mud puppies tonight so appreciate you tagging along and we'll catch you next time down the trail thank you